Good morning. Think everybody's just about in. I want to welcome you to our Veterans Day program. This program is an opportunity for us at Fannie County High School to give thanks to our veterans and to the family members of our veterans. Because without their dedicated service and time they spent in the military and our different forces, we wouldn't be where we are today. This is an absolute honor for myself and for all of our students that have put this program together. Because the most important thing today, as most days it should be, is to be grateful for the service that our guests have provided. We hope you guys enjoy this program. We have a lot of different uh, parts of this program. Uh, we want to take our time. We have a special guest speaker you're going to hear from today. Uh, as a student sitting in the audience, uh, you might not recognize some of the individuals that are going to be recognized today, but hopefully you're, you have an opportunity to uh, remember those in your family, those that have been close to you that have served. Uh, it's, a, it's a call to duty. We are so grateful and honored to have our guests here today, and today's program is for you. Thank you for coming. First thing we're going to do is present our callers. Thank you. Would you please rise for the posting of the colors? Post the colors.
please be seated. Those of you that served in the United States Army or currently serving in the United States Army, please rise for recognition. Air Rescue and Recovery Unit in Thailand in the spring of 1965. 
On September 28, 1965, while on a rescue mission over North Vietnam, his HH-43B aircraft was shot down and everyone on board was captured by the North Vietnamese. He spent the next seven and a half years as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam. Upon his release and return to the United States in 1973, Robinson was one of three enlisted men to receive a direct commission to lieutenant in the United States Air Force approved by President Richard M. Nixon in recognition of his conduct while being held as a prisoner of war. He, along with Neil Black, were the first enlisted men to receive the Air Force Cross, which is now on display in the United States Air Force Enlisted Museum. His other decorations include a Silver Star, Legion of Merit, Bronze Star, POW Medal, and two Purple Hearts, along with 17 other awards. Captain Robinson is also honored at the Elgin Air Force Base for the museum in the Vietnam Prisoner of War display at the Airman Leadership School. In the book, Honor Bound, American Prisoners of the War in Southeast Asia, it states he and Black are the longest held enlisted POWs in American history, which are available here today. After completing aircraft maintenance officer training in 1975, Captain Robinson was assigned to the 33rd Air Fighter Wing in Elgin Air Force Base as an aircraft maintenance officer, where he served until his medical retirement in 1984. Captain Robinson served 12 years as an enlisted man and 11 years as a commissioned officer for a total of 23 dedicated and honorable years of service to his country in the United States Air Force. Captain Robinson is married to the former Orr May Creel of Gulfport, Mississippi. They have two daughters and four granddaughters. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome me and welcoming our guest of honor and public speaker, W.A. Bill Robinson. Some of them were just cotton mill workers, and some were just the sons and daughters of cotton mill workers who simply said, take me. As we discussed the different age, my father, my uncle, and many of my senior cousins are on that wall who had gone and served their country. At one point, I noticed that some of the names had stars beside them. And I think we've all looked. An inquisitive star, and I asked my grandfather, I said, What does that star stand for? He kind of, with a lump in his throat and with tears in his eyes, he said, They're the ones who made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms that we enjoy every day. Just a few weeks ago, we had a traveling wall here in Blue Ridge. It had over 58,000 stars on it. 
of those from my generation that made the ultimate sacrifice for this nation. As we looked at that wall, we realized 39,000 on that wall were less than 19 years old or 19 years younger. There was a couple on there that were 16 that lied so they could serve their country. When we look at that group, over 1,500 of them are still missing in action. And they join the others from other wars who have not had a proper homecoming yet. You know, when we look back, Vietnam is just like World War II in Korea. They are fading fast from the world. But when we look at participation, we think about in World War II, there was 100% participation. In Korea, there was 50% participation. In Vietnam, 10%. Present day, 1%. And veterans alive today totals less than 3% of our population. So again, I ask our veterans to stand up and be recognized because they are the top 3% of our country. Yes, you might say that we left for Vietnam as teenagers and came back as men. My personal experience could be described as minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and yes, even years of boredom punctuated by terror. I was on a rescue mission over North Vietnam. I was shot down and captured. And I spent the next eight Thanksgivings, eight Christmases, and eight New Years in captivity. A world with no Big Macs, no junk food, no designer jeans. We wore black pajamas, no Nikes. Our shoes were cut from the sidewall of an old car tire. No radio, no TV, no phone, no hot water, cold in the winter, hot in the summer, and limited to any melted care. Our treatment was that of a criminal. Even though our government had stood up and labeled us as expendable, telling our families that we did this to ensure they had a reasonably comfortable life in captivity. But in reality, it was to get us off the front pages of the newspaper and TV, and it worked. Along with others, I was tortured. I was abused by the Vietnamese. Luckily, was on my side. I only spent about eight months in solitary confinement, where some guys spent over four years in a five by seven cell. Our outside time for the first five years was limited to about 15 minutes a day. I did not see the night sun sky or see the stars or the moon for over five years. We were fed twice a day, a soup and a side dish. It was mostly a seasonal vegetable, which is not here to report. The grass grows year round in Vietnam. We had two special meals a year, one at Christmas and one at their New Year. It consisted of a piece of sweet bread, a cup of coffee, or maybe a little bit larger ration of meat. They proudly told us they were feeding us on 26th a day. And, and that was the American value as to what we were being fed. You might say that it was difficult 
for us in the experience that we were basically a foot taller than most of the be, and anywhere from 50 to 75 pounds heavier. So the state was almost impossible because it just wasn't any way we could blend in the neighborhood. We were always jealous of our brothers from World War II who basically, through their state efforts during World War II in Europe, they kept a million Germans off the front lines just looking for prisoners of war who had escaped. So their contribution to the war during that period of time was much greater than ours. We had a motto, and it was simple, return with honor. Our guiding light was simply never give up, never give in, roll with the punches, bounce back, get ready for the next round. We saw the ups and downs of war, we saw the increasing troops, and eventually, a president stopped the bombing of North Vietnam, where we were being held. And then we thought we were on our way home, only to really discover that we were truly expendable in the big thing of life. We had the election. As a result, our treatment improved. But with the stopping of the bombing, we had been cut off from the outside world. We had no knowledge of what was going on. And the limited information, in fact, eventually they allowed our families to send us a small care package. In that little care package was a little sugar pack. On the back of it was a picture of Bill Armstrong stepping onto the moon. And that's how we found out of the accomplishments of our great land. We kept the faith, faith in ourselves, that we had the tools to get the job done. Faith in each other, that we would stand together and eventually return home with honor. Faith in our country, that it would not abandon us under difficult circumstances. But most of all, faith in our God, that he would see us through. In many ways, those of us who have been held in the North were enjoying luxury accommodations compared to my brothers in South Vietnam. I was just reading some reports the other day with our historian. We had 28 guys beat to death in North Vietnam. There was over 150 that we know of that beat to death in South Vietnam. And untold number that had been captured and executed. For if you were captured in the South, the only hope of the survival was to be overrun by friendlies and be exchanged, you might say, for money over the black market. We continue after President Nixon took over to the end of the war. You see, by the middle of 68, LBJ had said in 1964, I'm not going to send American boys to do what Asian boys should do for themselves. And when we turned around and looked in 1958, we had over 600,000 troops in Southeast Asia. President Nixon started to be admired the war, and eventually we were steadily being removed from South Vietnam. But no movement whatsoever in North Vietnam. The President Nixon authorized what we refer to as Sante, as a group of guys trained at Edward Air Force Base, and they went in to try to extract some American prisoners from a prison camp out called Sante. If you saw the Bin Laden raid on TV, you saw the Sante raid, an exact duplicate. They crashed landed the helicopter in the compound blew a hole in the wall, brought in reinforcements in less than three minutes. They had secured the area. They only find no prisoners there. As a result of that action, the Vietnamese knew that expendable oil no longer existed. It was changed to high value. 
As a result of that, the Hanoi Hill Committee, who only used a small portion of it, became a full prisoner of war camp. Could you imagine how some of us felt when they, after four years of solitary confinement, walked into the room with 40 other guys? Could you imagine how we felt when the Vietnamese came in and tried to designate their leadership and I saw my military defiance as a senior ranking officer stood up and took command? When they drove him out, the next guy stood up. We went some, in some room four and five deep each time. The next thing you're making out the field. We won our first victory with the Vietnamese. As a result of that, we had a little bit of negotiating power. And probably 20 or 30 guys who were none of the side survived another two years of captivity. We were able to get the Vietnamese to give us some help to take care of them. And they got to come home and spend time with their families. I think about this flag behind the old man and so And I think how much it means to me and the heartbreak I felt over the years as people had dis disrespected something that's so important and so sacred to these gentlemen and ladies sitting here on the front row. You know, they, just like myself, signed a blank check up and including a life payable to you, the United States of America. And they went into that willing to give all. You might say, giving their future for yours. I think about my friend Mike Christensen. One thing he felt was missing in the, in the bowels of the prison camp in North Vietnam was that flag. So Mike started gathering material, and eventually he gathered enough material, using the clay tiles on the roof, cigarette ashes, and whatever he could find. He got the colors he wanted, and eventually he found an American flag, proudly displayed in the back of his shirt. Senator McCain was in the room when that flag was displayed for the first time. He described the moment as these men stood up, saluted that flag, recited the Pledge of Allegiance, as they knew why they were here. Mike secured that flag for weeks on the end. One day the Vietnamese came in and found it, and things went absolutely Mike went forward to the room and identified himself as the maker of flag and thought a lot of what across the back of the head and down he fell in front of his roommate. As they moved forward to assist Mike to be at these locked and loaded and drug Mike out of, out of the room feet first. We could hear it as Mike was being beaten and beaten just because he wanted to share a flag with his roommate. Mike was eventually drug back into the room near death, just like he was. His roommates picked him up, cold water washed off in prayer. They nursed Mike back to health. Eventually, one day, Mike sat up in the middle of his bread with a grin from ear to ear and looked at his roommates, according to Senator McCain, and said, Time. The flag number two. If you never give up, you never give in. You'll go with the punches. You bounce back. You get ready for the next round. Eventually, we reached a point that the negotiations was not working. The only thing left was the release of the prisoners of war that were being held in North Vietnam, South Vietnam, Cambodia, and Iraq. And the Vietnamese says, if you just go in the house, we'll take care of that later. And the Vietnamese says, no. Because we knew there were French prisoners who had died in captivity waiting to be brought home. And in fact, the last group of French prisoners that were captured in 1954 were released in 1979 after 
25 years in captivity. And that America would not allow that to happen to her son. As a result of that, President Nixon, when they walked away from the table, unleashed what was referred to as linebacker two. During that period of time, we dropped more bombs than ever been dropped in the history of mankind. Not to advance a war, but to secure the freedoms of some 500 plus Americans in the world of captivity. Eventually, the Vietnamese came back to the table, signed an agreement, and you might say we were home with God. A friend of mine was asked, could you define freedom? And his simple response was, doors with inside knots. To me, as I look back on Vietnam, I think about the hero's welcome that I got coming home. I got to wear my uniform and see the shining suit. I got put on this day as a representative of an end to a war that had been eluding us for so long. I could not imagine my brothers when they came home. They were time when they left Vietnam so that they would land in darkness in our country. And they were ushered from the airplane to a bathroom in order to remove their uniform and so not to offend anyone. They were not given the proper welcome home. They were not given anything. And they were treated as though they had done something wrong. They were true American real heroes. I always say one of the saddest moments to me is when we forgave those who ran before we, as a nation, stood up and said thank you to those who cared, who served. So often we all get asked, young or old, what can we do to honor that? Those of you of voting age, that's the best way you can honor them. All they served for was to ensure you had the opportunity to have the government of your chief. Those of you of not of age, remind your parents, your grandparents, or your friends that are of voting age, take on that responsibility and exercise that right to vote and simply say thank you to those veterans who gave you that opportunity. Yes, you might say that Vietnam veteran has but one goal to make sure that one generation of veterans never abandon another. In closing, I want to share with you a poem that was written by a high school senior. It's kind of dated, but it goes back to 1997. A Pennsylvania senior wrote these words Mother and Father, Country and Country. Some people couldn't have ever gone about any war unless maybe they knew someone or they themselves was in it. And sometimes, they still don't care. I don't know anyone from World War I, but I still care. My grandfather was in World War II. I still care. I don't know anyone from the Korean War, but I still care. My brother was in the Persian Gulf War. I still care. My, my grandfather, my father, and my brother all came home. Thank God. They are my heroes. And I 
do you expect that? Thank you.
fellow to with us today to recognize our soldiers that are still or have been prisoners of war, known as POWs, and those soldiers that are still missing in action, known as MIAs. Mr. Bill Stargill was serving in the United States Air Force from 1970 to 1974. After winning the Air Force, he served as an airplane and power plant mechanic for Delta Airlines for 38 years. He is currently the junior vice commander of the American Legion, Post 248, and the commander of the North Georgia Honor Guard. Please welcome Mr. Bill Stargill. Thank you for that warm welcome. I have lived in Blue Ridge only six years, but I'm very proud to call this my home. This is the most patriotic county I've ever lived in, the most patriotic people I've ever known. It is my honor and my privilege to be here today. Now we want to recognize the prisoners of war and the missing in action. The empty chair you see on the stage here, to my right, is a symbol of the thousands of American prisoners of war and missing in action from all the wars and all the conflicts we've had in this great nation. The cover is a reminder for all of us to spare no effort to secure the release of any American prisoners from captivity and the return of the remains of those who have died so bravely in defense of the liberties and a full accounting of those that are missing. We must not forget their sacrifices. They're still making in their families the still suffering. They're suffering and enduring for us and our way of life. We must keep them alive in our minds and our hearts until we know they have returned home to their nation and their families. Or they dwell in the house of our Lord forever. We must continue to give moral support to their families. They're still suffering. From World War I, the present day activities, as I mentioned earlier, with the POW and MIA flag. There have been over 142,000 prisoners of war. And from World War II and all the conflicts since, over 90,000. And that number is still climbing today. May God bless you, this city this county, this country. And may God bless all the veterans here today. Thank you. Steve Strickland, Corporal, United States Army. Prisoner of Duty, Command Sergeant, United States Air Force. Nick Wimberly, Step 4, Army, Air Defense. Bill Stodger, Sergeant, United States Air Force. Richard Crosley, 
Staff Sergeant, Air Force. Gerald McMillan, Chief Petty Officer, United States Coast Guard, 20 years. David Hanson, Specialist, United States Army. Sam Culpepper, Specialist, E-4, Army National Guard. Marty Godfrey, Sergeant, E-5, United States Army. Harry Goss, Colonel, retired, United States Army Reserve. Louis T. DeLeese, E-5 Sergeant, United States Army. Raymond White, Spec 4, United States Army. Glenn Hughes, Sergeant, United States Army. Wayne Style, Sergeant, United States Army. Julian Black, E-4 Petty Officer, United States Navy. <laughs> Timothy Patrick, Pararescue Serviceman, United States Air Force. <laughs> Bill Couch, E-3, United States Navy. <laughs> Roy Blackburn, Sergeant, United States Air Force. Jay Bob, Major, United States Army. Sonny Payne, Specialist, Fourth Class, Army, Vietnam. Jerry L. Williams, Sergeant, United States Army. David Sanders, Major, United States Army. Robert Mills, Sonar Technician, Submarine Force Class, United States Navy. <laughs> Paul Hunter, Spec 4, United States Army. <laughs> Charles B. Spivey, Sergeant E-5, United States Army. Lawrence Darman Jiggett, Sergeant, United States Marine Corps. Rod McIntyre, E-5, United States Army. Garnett P. West, Spec 4, United States Army. James E. Jeans, E-4, United States Army. Tom Orkanian, E-5, United States Army. Tim Joyner, E-6, United States Navy. Bob Winkle, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Marine Corps. Bob Alderson, E-4, Corporal, United States Marine Corps. Robert J. Brown, Machinist Mate, Navy, United States Navy, 1943-1945. Graduate of Fanny County High School, 1939. Gary L. Queen, Lance Corporal, United States Marine. Larry Payne, Specialist for United States Army. Arnold Sindeldecker, Sergeant, United States Army. W.A. Bill Robinson, Captain, United States Air Force.
Retire the colors. Thank you, you may be seated. Once again, I just want to say thank you to our veterans that are here today. I do have a, a couple of students I do want to recognize. While many of you in our student body spent some time this summer, enjoying time with friends, working, doing different things here at home, we have two students that completed basic training with the Army National Guard. So they are all set to go after graduation this year. So I'd like to take a moment and recognize Alyssa Goodwin and Tyler Conley. Please stand. that have applied and are waiting on appointment 
to the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis. At this point, I'd like to recognize Matthew Shira and Thomas Bartoff. And we do have some seniors that have chosen to uh, pursue a career in one of our military branches after graduation. So if you're a senior that you've already enlisted or planned to enlist, could you please rise so we can recognize you as well? Thank you. It takes a lot of our students' involvement and our, our teachers to put on this program. So Ms. Holdsworth and Mr. Bonstead, thank you for your uh, groups performing for us today. I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Matthews and our FFA for helping uh, align our guests to, to their seats and just welcoming everybody. Uh, Mr. Gibbs and his video production, thank you for the video. And then, of course, downstairs after we're dismissed here, our veterans and their families are welcome to join us downstairs for a brunch uh, that's put on by Mrs. Adams and Ms. Owensby's classrooms. Um, we want to treat you guys to a, a lunch for us. And Mr. Bill Robinson is going to have a book signing. And uh, one thing I pulled away is never give up and never get it get in. So I appreciate your message to our students and for spending the day here with us today. Uh, I'd like to thank our students and of course your guys' attention uh, during this this show, this presentation. Um, we're very grateful, veterans. We'll be meeting you guys downstairs. I hope everybody has a great afternoon. Our seniors will dismiss first, and then the rest of our classes will go on to their next period. So thank you, everybody, uh, for being in attendance today. Thank you.